Hi guys, good afternoon. Uh, can you all uh, see me and hear me? <laughs> Just let me know if I'm live yet. Uh, one of you has been constantly asking for patho MKI images. Like you've commented on my every single video that you are an MKI patho. I will take it just for you. Uh, the next uh, must know images is going to be on path. All right. Just for your sheer persistence. Uh, we are going to be doing path next. All right. Uh, but uh, today we are completing orthopedics. So we started off. If you have not seen the previous video. We have done uh, a bunch of images. It's almost like a crash course on ortho that we are doing in these two classes. All right. So um, I think we are live. Uh, now okay so uh, there are two classes for ortho which we've uh, uh, done one is completed second one's uh, this so uh, just uh, catch the first one also uh, this for fmg yes yes for everybody this is uh, very important uh, these are the crash course any video which i take is for everybody you know because um, like a non faculty non specialist faculty is taking so it's got to be important right that is the logic that you can use so we've done all of these images we are gonna be picking up from where we left so we did uh, trauma we did the clinical tests and a lot okay medicine ka bhi lenge sab kuch karenge all right but <laughs> every day i'm taking classes like if you see my schedule and if you're following me closely on plus also it's like on a daily basis i am practically taking not one but two classes on a daily basis so i mean you can't ask for more because there is no time and you also don't have time to see all of it but yeah very soon i will do and uh, i why i didn't post ortho annotated pdf is because i i'll just post this entire thing together all right that was the reason why i was just waiting that i'll post this entire thing um, together okay uh all right let's begin then what to read for radio to if you're starting now so i've planned two hour ka uh special class which is a free class on an academy app which is going to be held uh um uh on uh eight 18th yeah on 18th we have a two hour session on radiology so for everybody for neat last minute revision especially for fmg last minute revision just do that class i'll be covering the most important images and usually it's from those images only that you get your bulk of the questions so 90% questions would be sorted okay apart from that uh, yes happy lodi to all of you as well i hope winters will give us some respite now and the cold will reduce uh, that is my only hope from lori <laughs> nothing else um there's a btr session today evening on uh, um yeah that's uh there at six o'clock all right i'll share that link also with you guys on the group um mki part two uh, that is surgery is there on the app all right so that is a special link again i posted it on the last class also i posted that link this time also i'll post it in the comment section okay okay all right thank you so much uh anything else that you want to uh, do gapshap about before we start off with the images एमकेआई ट्वेंटी से पहले करा दो हाँ सी सारे एम के आई तो नहीं हो पाएंगे बट मोस्टली हैव कवर्ड ऑलमोस्ट ऑल ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट्स यू नो इन रैपिड रिविजन इन वन फॉर्म और दी अदर बट या आई ट्राई टू डू एज मच एज पॉसिबल ओके ऑल राइट सो लेट्स बिगिन देन आई गेस पोस्ट इन टेलीग्राम येस आई विल पोस्ट इन टेलीग्राम ग्रुप एवरी थिंग दैट आई एम डूइंग इन माई लाइफ इज इज देयर ऑन द चैनल ऑल राइट सो यू कैन जस्ट ग्रो थ्रू द चैनल इट्स कॉल नीट पी जी वि डॉक्टर जैनब हो रहा है उसमें सब मिल जाएगा ईसीजी इज आल्सो लाइंड अप कल ही ईसीजी की क्लास है बट इट्स अ प्लस क्लास ऑन इंटीग्रेटेड सीवीएस और लाइक सो अ फ्री क्लास ऑन ईसीजी आल्सो आई विल ट्राई एंड टेक वेरी सून बट for the plus subscribers good news is i'm finally budging and i'm taking ecg tomorrow with uh, integrated cvs okay all right so let's begin then and then uh, we'll uh, and then we'll chat okay okay how many mk are done till now so we've done micro we've done surgery and this is the second part of ortho so we've done total 4 mk is three subjects so far and radio is what is lined up next uh, on 18th okay and then i'll also try and take patho because of uh dr shubham's request uh, uh, everywhere <laughs> okay so we'll have patho next theek hai okay chalo fir abhi uh, abhi shuru karte hain with this all right 
okay so what we have here are two uh, hip dislocations everywhere in the body which hip dislocation is more common it is always posterior which is more common except shoulder where it's anterior dislocation which is more common we talked about this in the last class as well where we talked about anterior dislocation so here what we are seeing is a posterior dislocation of hip the biggest clue they'll give you is the position of the limb they'll give you the limb attitude uh, in the clinical history it is going to be in fadir position you know what is fadir flexion adduction internal rotation and what is going to be the biggest buzzword is they will write that the, there is limb shortening when you hear the word limb shortening this has to be posterior hip dislocation in fact when you look at the x-ray you'll know how limb is shortened right you can see how the femur is dislocated supero posteriorly you can see it's upwards right it's dislocated from the acetabulum it's upwards on the right side okay so this is posterior hip dislocation yahan pe question aata hai which is the nerve which is injured here so posterior thigh ka nerve supply kya hai sciatic so same remember posterior dislocation mein kaun sa nerve injured hoga it's going to be the sciatic nerve on the other hand in anterior dislocation the trick is to identify look at the lesser trochanter the lesser trochanter becomes so prominent whereas the lesser trochanter here will not be well seen all right so this lesser trochanter really helps you and you see how it has dislocated infero anteriorly so that is why you have limb lengthening and you're going to have a faber attitude of the limb so there's going to be limb lengthening that you're going to see and yahan pe kaun sa nerve injured hoga again the anterior compartment का नर्व विच इज फिमोरल नर्व राइट सो जस्ट रिमेम्बर थाई कंपार्टमेंट नर्व एंड दैट हेल्प यू आउट वेर एवर यू आर स्टक यू नो एज फार एज लोअर लिम नर्व इंजरीज आर कंसर्न ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट इंटीरियर एंड पोस्टीरियर पोस्टीरियर इज फार मोर कॉमन देन इंटीरियर राइट सो वी गॉट दैट इट इज फार मोर कॉमन फॉर ऑल ज्वाइंट एंकल एल्बो हिप एवरी वेर इज पोस्टीरियर डिस्लोकेशन विच इज मोर कॉमन now we have a few splints and braces that we got to do so what is this where you see so many wires crammed in right so isliye crammer splint bolte isko so crammer splint abhi hum log kya kar rahe hain hum log emergency mein kya karte hain cram karte hain cheeze ratte hain so this is used in emergencies right so this is for immobilization of the limb splints are used for immobilization as first aid so this is the crammer splint which is used in emergencies very very important last class mein bhi humne dekha tha थॉमस है ना थॉमस टेस्ट देखा था दैट वॉज ऑल्सो फॉर टी बी फॉर इलियस वॉज फ्लेक्शर दिस इज द थॉमस स्प्लिंट और राइट सो दिस इज द थॉमस स्प्लिंट दैट यू हैव इट वॉज ओरिजिनली अगेन डिस्कवर्ड फॉर टी बी बट नाउ वी डोंट रियली यूज इट फॉर टी बी नाउ वट डू वी यूज <laughs> now we use yeah this is one of the rare occasions where all of my tech is sorted like i am feeling so special today that aaj kuch issue nahi hua start karne se pehle it's very weird feeling that sab kuch charged hai laptop is charged ipad is charged connector worked net worked stream ki worked everything worked like it's a very it's a miracle christmas miracle has happened today <laughs> so thomas blend is tb and it is used for fracture shaft of फीमर और रेड फ्रैक्चर शाफ्ट ऑफ फीमर फ्रेश भी लग रही हूँ हाँ नींद भी नहीं आ रही दोपहर के दो बजे लाइक सच सच मिराक्यूलस डे सो थॉमस प्लेट एंड फ्रैक्चर शाफ्ट ऑफ फीमर ओके चलो अभी यहाँ पे आ जाओ व्हाट इज दिस यू नो बीबी बीबी क्रीम गाइस गर्ल्स को पता होगा बीबी क्रीम क्या होता है ना मल्टीपर्पज इट हैज फाउंडेशन ऑल्सो इट हैज दिस आई एम नॉट सेइंग द सीक्रेट ऑफ माय ग्लो आई एम जस्ट टेलिंग यू द ट्रिक टू रिमेम्बर कि बीबी क्रीम से याद रखो बीबी स्प्लिंट ये स्प्लिंट भी ना मल्टीपर्पज इट इज गोन स्प्लिंट ऑल्सो एंड इट इज गोन अ बेसिकली गिव ट्रैक्शन ऑल्सो तो अगर आपको स्प्लिंट के साथ ट्रैक्शन फ्री मिल जाए मतलब अगर प्राइमर के साथ फाउंडेशन फ्री मिल जाए दैट इज बी बी क्रीम सेम वे यू हैव बॉलर ब्राउन स्प्लिंट सो दिस इज बी बी स्प्लिंट ओके सो दिस वील रिमेम्बर दिस प्रोवाइड ट्रैक्शन ऑल्सो स्केलेटल ट्रैक्शन दे देता है खाली ट्रैक्शन नहीं स्केलेटल ट्रैक्शन दे देता है ओके एनोटेटेड वर्जन आई विल पोस्ट रही है वंस दिस क्लास इज ओवर जैसे ही एनोटेट हो जाए जैसे ही भेज दूंगी ठीक है वट डू वी हैव यूर टू बच्चा जिनको फ्रैक्चर शाफ्ट ऑफ फीमर हो गया या फ्रैक्चर नेक ऑफ फीमर हो गया सो फ्रैक्चर फीमर इन चिल्ड्रेन हु आर इधर लेस देन टू ईयर्स ऑफ एज या फिर वेट वाइज दे आर लेस देन टेन के जीज वी कैन अप्लाई दिस टू ट्रैक्शन वन इज गैलोज ट्रैक्शन एंड वन इज what is the other traction that you are seeing so here whenever you see that the hips are in air hai na hawa mein whenever you are galloping on a horse to aap gallop karoge to uh, the buttocks will be in the air so this is the gallows 
traction and the other one where the hips or the buttocks are on the ground this is the bryant's traction all right so remember gallows and bryant's traction are both in kids with fracture femur agar galloping buttocks are in the air to wo gallop ho gaya aur ye bryant traction ho gaya theek hai okay going ahead into the next uh, image what do you see here at the thumb insertion you are having an avulsion fracture of the ulnar collateral ligament so ye kya hai this is the game keeper's thumb all right so this is called as game keeper's thumb also called as skier's thumb hai na ski jo karte hain unko ho jata hai avulsion fracture can you see here there's a, a chip which is coming out do not look at this sesamoid bone ye nahi dekhna isko dekho fracture ko theek hai can you see this so this is a chip fracture which is a chip fracture or an avulsion fracture of the ulnar collateral ligament here it becomes a surgical uh, indication if you have something which is called as a steiner lesion what is a steiner's lesion the steiner's lesion is when you have a duct Adductor pollicis longus. Adductor pollicis longus comes and uh, becomes interposed between this avulsion. Us time pe usko surgery karna padta hai. So how we can remember is ulnar collateral ligament. Do you know ulnar nerve supplies only one pollicis muscle, which is adductor pollicis, right? So that is how you can remember ulnar and adductor pollicis longus. Okay. So this is about gamekeepers. thumb then what do we have here we have a male can you see this is a male who is playing uh whatever he is playing baseball yeah so male is playing baseball and what happened his extensor tendon got injured so that is why you are seeing that baki sab extend ho pa raha hai but this finger is not extended it is flexing so this is male is playing so this is mallet and male is playing extensor mallet extensor tendon ka injury all right so this is how you are going to remember mallet and male you can see is playing baseball so this is mallet finger or baseball finger wherein you have tensor tendon injury obviously on the dorsal aspect that is why you will have persistent flexion exact opposite can you see a female playing rugby so when you have a female playing rugby it is not mallet so it is rugby finger right uh, also called as jersey the female is playing jersey uh, wearing jersey so rugby or jersey finger which is seen when you have female for say flexor right so yahan pe flexor tendon ka injury ho jayega so flexor tendon is injured so what will you see ki baki fingers flex ho pa rahi hai but ye extended hai theek hai so these are your three fingers very very important but this is not it there are few more fingers and hands which we confuse to sab kuch we will see at the same time two old people who are showing you these hands what can you see you can see subcutaneous nodules hai na ha female hai na female female hi hai iske boy cut hai re all right but you can see this is definitely female all right wo nahi hai to bhi yaad rakho that it is female all right okay then what do you have here we have nodules all right so we have nodules in osteo arthritis all right so we have osteoarthritis how do you remember in the first year there are two things right we only know two things in the first year one is dissection hall and one is uh, blood pressure kaise napna hai so that is how you will remember first year ki yaad hai dh and bp so these are your two nodules so when you see nodules which are there in the distal interphalangeal Uh, joints dip these are heberden nodules so these are heberden nodes or heberden nodules or jo pip pe mil raha hai so this is bp so these are borchard nodules at pip theek hai to ye hamare baki do fingers after mallet and uh, Uh, jersey then we have D, dh and bp which are the next two confusers the next two confusers are swan neck and bottom ear to iske liye hum kaise deal karenge we will remember one mnemonic street food of delhi it's amazing right so we'll remember sfd street food of delhi so swan neck mein what do you have you have flexion at dip bas ek yaad rakh liya baki everything is opposite so swan neck is flexion at dip so it's got to be extension at pip and obviously bottom ears is going to be opposite so bottom ears going to be extension at dip and flexion at pip all right so mujhe kuch bhi yaad nahi rakhna i only have to remember s f 
D and then everything else I can fill up, isn't it? So, what do you see here in the two fingers? Can you see how there is flexion at the DIP and extension at PIP? So, ye ho gai swan neck fingers. And second one here you are having flexion at DIP and extension at PIP. So, this is bottom nears. If you are of the opinion that ye kaisa bakwas pneumonic hai, I am going to make these fingers in the exam and actually see what looks like a swan neck and bottom ear, do not do that because you will forget in the exam. In the exam, you will be doing this, this and wasting 5 minutes of your time and then in the end, you will get confused. So, just remember SFD, street food of Delhi, okay? All right. Next, what do you have? You have radial deviation of the wrist, ulnar deviation of the finger. So, this is Z deformity. All right. So, this is Z deformity where you have this ulnar deviation at the metacarpophalangeal and you have a radial deviation at the wrist. Finally, a Z deformity of the thumb. This is called as Z thumb or a hitch hiker's thumb wherein again you are having interphalangeal joint flexion and metacarpophalangeal hyperextension. So, this is your Z thumb or your hitch hiker's thumb. All of these findings, 1, 2, 3 and 4, all of these four hands are associated with deformities of rheumatoid arthritis. Okay? आगे बढ़ते हुए, two more hands. Two more hands, जो है हमारे पास, wandering acetabulum is in TB. We will look at that. Okay? वो अलग हो गया. What do we have? This is diabetic keroarthropathy. ये FMG का repeat question है from two years back. Diabetic keroarthropathy. It is again a soft tissue contractural deformity wherein if you ask the person to keep the hands flat on the table, they won't be able to keep. So, you will have this flexion persistent at various joints and when you ask the person to pray, normally to pray we need to do a position of both the hands. This person again won't be able to do that. So, we have this prayer sign which is a repeat question. Iska photo ban kya aya hai? And this is table top sign all right so these are two signs that we have in diabetic keroarthropathy very good med student forever we have one more diabetic uncle who has carbuncle multifocal follicular uh, folliculitis which is merging with each other at the nape of the neck do you remember that so that is carbuncle okay then few more fingers it is not the end for confusing fingers when you see that there is a thickened tunnel and the pulley is uh, basically contracted so you have a1 pulley ke karan you have persistent flexion because of the tendon being trapped this is called as a trigger finger right so this is trigger finger where the issue is with a1 pulley which is compressing on the flexor tendon and uske karan there is persistent flexion of the finger so very important do not confuse this with which finger do not confuse it with our mallet finger right us may be persistent flexion hai but there you will have history of trauma there is injury whereas here there is contraction right there is contraction ke karan extension nahi ho para extension is not possible because of a persistent contracture okay i hope this is clear to all of you do not confuse the two okay and you can also remember males are the ones who press triggers commonly, right, rather than females. So, that sticks with our mallet finger, ki dono mein hi you will have a persistently flexed finger, okay. Then, very, very important, it's a, it's a four-part sign, a sign which has four parts, you have a completely swollen finger, which is a fusiform finger like a dactylitis again flexural sheath pe tenderness hai and you have pain on extension persistently flexed era hai extension is not happening and that is why you have a flexed posture so third flexed finger for us this is suppurative this is inflammatory redness is your giveaway suppurative tenosynovitis and this sign is called as the cannavels sign so this is the cannibal sign for superative tenosynovitis all right so three flexed fingers i hope this entire set is clear you get at least one hand or finger from this in every exam hai na? So one question is at least in our pocket for sure then we have these planes for the spine all right so whenever you have spine trauma how do you brace the spine so you have three for cervical spine Subse pehla, can you see how it's a halo around the head hai na? halo just a ring hai so this is called a as halos west for c spine next is where you have 
two posts anteriorly two post posteriorly so this is four post collar and the third one is called as somi brace somi brace stands for sterno occipito mandibular if you know the full form you'll never mix it up you can see that it is <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry it is in the sternum it is in the occiput and it is in the mandible so three positions so me brace and those ke currency you will never confuse either of them all right then for the thoracolumbar spine when you see ki anteriorly spinal hyperextension hai it is called as the ash brace anterior spinal hyperextension and when you see there is a male and a female both do you know taylor taylor is a name jo males mein bhi hota hai taylor and you have it in females also taylor swift all right so this is the taylor brace just my male female don't know key photo when they who i okay so we have a s and taylor which are for dorsal lumbar spine very very important what is the angle being measured whenever you see lateral deviation of spine this is scoliosis this is cobb's angle do not get it wrong cobb's angle is for scoliosis we also saw adam's forward bending test for screening of scoliosis yeah Yes, Canavel is diagnostic for superative tenosynovitis Russian. Okay, so this is scoliosis. What are the various braces that we use for scoliosis? So this is the one which routinely comes in the exam. This is the one which is most commonly asked. This is the Milwaukee brace. Yeah, few of you saying the angle correct. 40 degree ke beyond, it's an indication of surgery. Otherwise, we would be giving them braces. Okay, so the brace which is most commonly used is the Milwaukee brace. The second one, which is uh, like a tube top, is Boston, all right. So, which is like a tube top, as you can remember, in Boston, there are more tube tops in tube tops in Boston brace. And lastly, what we have here is the most effective one. Also looking kind of like a tube top, but a male is wearing a tube top. Just remember these images only. This is Charleston brace. Charleston brace, remember, is the most important uh, uh, it's the most effective brace all right so it only has to be worn in the night baki sare braces we have to wear for 24 hours so this is the most effective but still it is not not most common milwaukee is most common because it is pretty expensive okay so this is what you want to know about yeah like a corset so this is all about scoliosis that you want to remember next we have ddh or before we go to ddh we not want to talk about shenton's line this is going to be true for any hip pathology which is going to involve the neck of femur all right so anything which involves the neck of femur remember we want the shenton's line which is there to be intact agar normal hai otherwise it will be broken so how do we have the shenton's line it starts from the neck of femur and it is going on to the inferior margin of the superior pubic ramus so this is the shenton's line this curve has to be integrate integral if it is broken like in this case you know that something is wrong with the hip all right so in this case what do we see so one is shenton's line is broken second we have two more lines that you want to know one is the hilge and rena's line hilge and rena's line is drawn through the triradiate cartilage all right horizontal line through triradiate cartilage then i draw one more vertical line which is from the lateral margin of acetabulum lateral margin of acetabulum i draw a vertical line normally jo femur ka head hai that should occupy the infero medial part right lower and inner quadrant pe hona chahiye. here i see it is displaced upwards right upwards and outwards so this is definitely dislocation of hip so this is developmental dysplasia of hip normally it should lie here in the infero medial quadrant okay so these are the three lines shenton's arch is broken and when you look at the quadrant made by Hilge and Rehner and Perkins, you'll find the head getting displaced. So that is what we see in DDH. Now for DDH, initial investigation is X-ray where we are going to perform all of this. But what is the investigation of choice if you have a baby who is less than 6 months? It just may epiphysis is not going to be opacified yet. Epiphysis wouldn't have appeared. In this case, we have to do ultrasound. On ultrasound, we have alpha angle and we have beta angle. 
what happens to each one of them very important normally if you are my student you know that vowels stick together but here this is an exception where alpha does not increase alpha decreases right so remember here vowels don't stick together alpha decreases beta increases another such confuser where you have increased decrease is in calcaneal fracture to yahi pe usko bhi sort karte hain in calcaneal fracture you have bohlers and you have jessens so remember बोहलर लोवर्स है ना तो बोहलर रिड्यूसेस जिसन इंक्रीजेस अनदर एंगल वी हैव इज द काइट्स एंगल व्हिच इज यूज्ड इन सीटीईवी राइट सो दीस आर ऑल ऑफ द एंगल्स व्हिच आर योर कॉमन कंफ्यूजर्स जो आपने को याद रखने कॉब्स एंगल इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट व्हिच वी हैव ऑलरेडी डन ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट डीडीएच फॉर डीडीएच बेबीज यू नो बार्लो एंड ऑटोलानी वी हैव कवर्ड देम एंड दैट इज व्हाई ऑटोलानी वाज एन अबडक्शन या ऑटोलानी वाज एन अबडक्शन एंड दैट इज व्हाट वाज रीलोकेटिंग दैट इज व्हाई जब हम इनको स्प्लिंट भी करते हैं इट इज इन एन अबडक्ट position of the hip and this is called as von rosen splint okay we also have a von rosen x ray view for same for ddh only we use the von rosen's x ray view itself all right so same you want to remember so von rosen splint isko hum pollic harness ke form mein bhi baan sakte hain all right so this one is von rosen's okay so this is about ddh what you need to know when you see that the uh femoral uh, head here the femoral epiphysis here is completely degenerated they give you a history that there is a 4 to 8 year old baby who's having a limp a limp which is painless more than painful it could be both more commonly it is painless 4 to 8 year old and the x rays diagnostic here where you see that it is completely degenerating this is perthes yeah you can call it avn but in 4 to 8 years the better term to use is perthes disease all right so it is a type of avn only but the particular name for the child is going to be perthes all right so this is perthes 4 to 8 years old when you see this degenerated femoral head iske liye kafi names are also being used so we have a sagging rope sign you have a gauge sign and all of that but ultimately just look at the x ray if you see the head is disintegrated means there is necrosis of the bone it is perthes disease on the other hand this is a frog's leg view right so you can see that the femur is in an oblique position this is a frog leg view and what do you see look at the epiphysis the epiphysis is showing you a postero medial displacement right so this is skiffy what is skiffy slipped capital femoral epiphysis very important yahan pe age group diya hoga 8 to 12 years or basically there would be an adolescent right kaisa adolescent मोटा अडोलेसेंट सो ओबीज अडोलेसेंट सुनते ही यू हैव टू थिंक ऑफ स्कीफी स्लिप्ड कैपिटल फिमोरल एपिफाइजिस व्हिच इज द पोस्टेरो मीडियल डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ द एपिफाइजिस दैट यू वुड सी हियर द मैनेजमेंट इज गोना बी इमीडिएट पिनिंग है ना इसको फटाफट से आपको पिन करके यू हैव टू स्टॉप द डिस्प्लेसमेंट फर्दर देयर इज वन साइन व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एज ट्रीदोवन्स साइन और बेसिकली देयर इज अ ट्रीदोवन्स लाइन वेयर यू ड्रॉ फ्रॉम द शाफ्ट एंड इट should normally agar normal hota it should cut the femoral epiphysis but here because of the shift it is not cutting it tangentially this is called as the tridovan sign and this line that we have drawn has been given the name of cleans line all right so these are all the terms that you want to remember abhi ek bar sun lo exam mein dekh ke yaad aa jayega and it is because there is injury to the growth plate the salter harris classification is type 1 Okay, so this is Salter Harris type one. These are all the points that you would be given most commonly. जैसे ही पढ़ा, OB is a dolus, and you can mark answer as Skiffy slip capital femoral epiphysis. Okay, then one more hip in a child. What do you see here? That the neck shaft angle normally is basically around one twenty degrees. When it is reduced, this is called as coxa. vera in coxa vera only one question is come what is this bony triangle called this is called as fair banks triangle and the gate that we have not just in coxa vera but anything to do with the integrity of the greater trochanter its muscle and its nerve so any time either you have coxa vera or you have greater trochanter fracture 
or you have the muscles inserting on greater trochanter which are what what muscles insert on greater trochanter we have gluteus medius and minimus hai na not maximus gluteus medius and minimus inka kuch injury ho gaya myopathy ho gaya or the nerve supplying them which nerve supplies them it is superior gluteal nerve right not inferior inferior supplies maximus to in me se kisi bhi level pe there is an issue the common gait we are going to have is Treadelenburg gait. Treadelenburg gait can be remembered by one thing, which is dolly. If you remember this, you will never get it wrong. What is dolly? That there is going to be opposite side droop. Drooping is going to be opposite. Lurch is going to be ipsilateral. Usually, they'll give you a history that there's a person who's having an abnormal gait. The right side hip is drooping when he walks. Where is the problem? Problem is left GT or left gluteus or left SGN or left coxa vera. Opposite side. All right. Isko yaad rakhta hai. This question will come as a clinical scenario. Do not get it wrong. Okay. I hope this is clear. Very, very important. Cannot make this mistake. This is one question which will come in FMG exam. One question which will come in NEET. And you will promise me right now that ma'am, isko galat nahi karenge. When you read that there is a young male, 20 to 30 year old male with low back ache. And that is an inflammatory kind of backache. They are giving you that there is associated redness of the eye. There is uveitis. They are giving you that there is associated bilateral heel pain because of enthesitis. The answer is going to be ankylosing spondylitis. Ankylosing spondylitis, even though it is fusing the spine, what is the earliest manifestation? Earliest manifestation is going to be sacroiliitis. And that is why the most sensitive investigation the investigation of choice to detect the sacroiliitis is going to be MRI. Remember, this is going to be bilateral asymmetrical sacroiliitis. Agar aapko de rahe hai unilateral sacroiliitis, always rule out TB. Unilateral sacroiliitis, rule out TB. After SI joint is fused, ankylosis. Now spine is going to be involved. You are going to have this complete fusion of the spine with the vertical syndesmophytes in processes ko bolte hai syndesmophytes and this appearance is eventually gonna be very fused like a bamboo which is called bamboo spine also called as a tram track spine and when you see that interspinous ligament is also ossified we call it the dagger sign so ye sare hi signs milte hai angst pond mein apart from that they can give you clinical test when the baby not the baby, but the man bends forward. There's going to be limited flexion, which is called as modified Schober's test. Okay. So, these are all of the findings that you want to remember about Angspond. Last year, ke neat mein, two questions came on Angspond. Like, two out of 200. That is something which is a gift. So, aise galat nahi karna. And again, do not use your extra over smart brain. If your brain tells you ki, ek ka answer to Angspond ho gaya, dousra to nahi ho sakta. And you change your answer. That is a very, very stupid mistake to make. Alright. Neat mein kuch bhi ho sakta hai. Go with this mind frame. Right now, I am telling you, there can be five questions on one topic. Do not use your extra brain thinking ki ek bar ho gaya to dusri bar nahi aa sakta aisa nahi hai okay you can get as many questions as they want fine so do not change your answer on that basis take it on the merit of that mcq and mark accordingly do not think of any other mcq while you are solving that mcq one more tip for you while att attempting the paper one question at a time purane ka answer abhi mat socho don't think kya tha kya tha yaad nahi aa raha if you will waste you will make this question also wrong you'll make a silly mistake you'll lose a mark all right so very very important that you will basically take it one mcq at a time keep telling yourself that ki bas abhi next dabadiya means now focus on this one not the previous one okay Shobas test Priya means you have not seen last class. So that is your homework. You will find MKI Ortho 1 on YouTube itself. You will see that so that your orthopedics gets done completely today. Okay. What do we see here? Here we see that the bones are not 
bones are not very opaque the density is overall reduced you can see how they are bent which are not able to take the axial load so this gonna mostly be uh, seen in a postmenopausal female dengue this is osteoporosis the shape the bent shape is called as cod fish yeah cod fish ka mouth appearance all right so this is cod fish sign osteoporosis investigation of choice is a dexa scan dual energy x-ray absorptometry for that the who staging uses something called as a t-score wherein i compare the bone mineral density of this patient with a young adult remember young adult t-shirts young adult ke saath t-score all right and if it is more than minus 2.5 standard deviation that means that we define this as osteoporosis okay so this is about osteoporosis apart from that what else do you want to know we have a few new investigations such as quantitative ultrasound and ct which can also be used as far as biochemical markers go this is the best here you have everything normal all right today evening six o'clock class i will be telling you about calcium phosphate like very beautiful table where we'll summarize all biochemical markers of all calcium phosphate pth alp okay Oh God, why do spammers keep coming like this? I don't know what to do for girls x18. Okay, anyways, you will just, oh, I just blocked the wrong person. Okay, sorry. What do you see here? We have a few spine, right? We have a, today evening, six o'clock. I will just share that link also with you. Okay, come on, let's focus here now. What do you have here? We have a few spine. They'll give you the history that there's a person with short neck. There is a person who has a short neck and uh, a hairline, which is obviously going to be rising. So this is clipple feel, right? So this is clipple feel syndrome. Clipple feel syndrome, you will have fused C spine, right? Fused cervical spine milega. Can you see how there are block vertebrae? Fused C2, C3, C4. So this is going to be a fused cervical spine with a short neck, obviously and a hairline which is again gonna be higher okay so same same finding basically the spine is fused ctv ka management ctv ka management is gonna be ponseti or kites technique wherein in this order cave order we are gonna be basically correcting the deformities okay and then you give them dennis brown splint dennis brown splint pe bhi photo aa sakti hai so if this is the these are the two shoes iske beech mein ek line hoegi well it's just like skater shoes like that so this is what is the management of ctev okay shilpa next what do you have here we have scapula which is raised when scapula which is raised remember this is sprangles deformity even clipple fail is actually associated with sprangles deformity okay so sprangles deformity can also have a bony bar which is called a omohyoid bar okay so this is sprangles for you Something which has been coming in FMG for uh, not last exam, but last uske do exam consecutive you had this image. So this is MRI. Yesterday, do you remember we did a test to detect disc prolapse? That was the Lasagne test and not lasagna test or a straight leg raise test. Yes, very from 60 to 75 degree arch, you will have paresthesias. Okay. Keshav, uh, please go and study your uh, NAT physio biochem. Or okay, time hai abhi. Okay. So what we have here is MRI. All right. So MRI spine will be the investigation of choice for disc prolapse. In this MRI, can somebody tell me which is the disc level which is prolapsing? Kansa level prolapse ho hai? How to find out? First of all, I'm sure you can all see ki yaha pe kuch kala kala disc is coming out. Right? So yaha pe kala kala disc is coming out. So this is the prolapse. Now which vertebral level? For that, always go from the promontory. So when you see ki yaha pe angle bend ho gaya, this is S1. So if this is S1, this is L5, this is L4. So here the disc prolapse is at L4, L5 level. Very good. So L4, L5 ho gaya humara ye wala level. Now what question they ask is what is the most common nerve which is compressed here. So here you need to, the answer is slightly more complicated. So there are two kinds of nerves at every IV disc level. Look at this. If this is a cross section, we have two kinds of nerves. So if you look at the thecal sac, we have at L4, L5, I'm going to have the L5 roots, lower level wale roots I'm going to have, which I called as traversing roots. Wo se ja rahe hai. And the nerve which is exiting from the foramen at this level is going to be upper wala level. So L4 here is called as the exiting root. 
okay i hope this is clear that technically both of these nerves can be compressed but most commonly the herniation that i have is central like this this herniation is central so whenever we have a central disc herniation which is far more common which roots do you think will be compressed it's going to be the traversing roots right so it's going to be l5 roots which are your traversing roots which are more commonly compressed but sometimes <coughs> sometimes you can have a foraminal disc like this so in foraminal uh, disc all right lateral disc you can have the exiting root which is going to be the l4 root which can get compressed so this is the entire concept exam mein itna dimag lagana hai no exam mein puchhenge which is the most common nerve root which is to be uh, compressed here so always mark the lower level all right so l oh god so it is l5 which is traversing all right so it is l5 which is the traversing root which is going to be most commonly compressed so look at the level or jo niche jayega that is going to be compressed suraj asking paradiscal not common paradiscal common but different entity disease is different answer is correct but question is wrong <laughs> okay so that is in tb in tb we have paradiscal type okay this is nerve root her this is disc prolapse okay so in disc prolapse we are going to have l5 all right so niche jana hai niche wala level kya samjhe ki jo bhi disc herniation hai niche wala level is the most common nerve root to be compressed pehchan loge kaun sa disc hai everybody you start from s1 and then you go up okay all right then we have this any time they show you c spine flexion and extension when they show you flexion and extension of c spine they are always showing you atlanto axial dislocation all right so atlanto axial dislocation is being shown when they show you a paired flexion extension view what happens whenever you are going to see this in the flexed view can you see the ad is going to increase so any atlanto axial distance more than 3 mm all right so 5 mm in children and 3 mm in adults ad more than 3 mm this is atlanto axial dislocation aapke liye trick yahi hai x ray dekh liya paired flex extension it is this only so this is pondylolis this is very common in rose position while doing tonsillectomy or adenoidectomy this syndrome this question is very common not the syndrome per se this is grissel's syndrome all right so remember grissel syndrome apart from that other risk factor could be down syndrome and very very important rheumatoid arthritis ra does not affect rest of the spine it affects the c spine and it can cause atlanto axial dislocation very very commonly tested question on ra okay what do you have here if patient tells you that he has a pus discharging sinus from the lower limb this is chronic osteomyelitis theek hai chronic osteomyelitis good right that's a good thing ye sab yaad ho jayega hum itni baar revise karenge ki exam tak sab aise we'll take a mki class any moment chronic osteomyelitis the central part which is dense is sequestrum all right so sursae sequestrum sursae sclerotic it is whiter all right so this is sequestrum which is going to be the more denser part but the outer more loosened part is called involucrum so involucrum is loosened why is it not opaque because it is not bone what is it it is granulation tissue hai na to jahan pe dead bone hai that is going to be sequestrum okay so dead bone there is no devascularization that is why it is very white so central sursae sequestrum sursae sclerotic it is dead outside involucrum loosened it is granulation tissue and jahan se bone give way karega and you have fragments that is called cloaca from where you have the discharging sinus so i hope three points are clear sursae sequestrum fir involucrum and then cloaca exam mein nahi samajh aa raha mark sequestrum usually it is sequestrum what is asked is the central white portion these are all findings of chronic osteomyelitis okay acute osteomyelitis what is the most common cause acute osteomyelitis affects the metaphyses yes the most common cause is any time you are in doubt in orthopedics it is staph aureus all right it is s aureus which is the most common except history denge sickle cell anemia multiple times asked answer kya hoega you will say it is 
सैलमोनेला राइट सो सिक्कल सेल में सैलमोनेला हो जाएगा बाकी हर जगह पिच का बी स्टाफ और इन्फेक्शन अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट दे कैन आस्क यू इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ चॉइस फॉर अक्यूट ऑस्टियोमाइलाइटिस इट इज एम आर आई रिमेम्बर एनी टाइम यू वॉन चेक बोन मैरो मैरो को देखना है म से एम आर आई बोन मैरो इडीमा सेक्रो इलियाइटिस अक्यूट ऑस्टियोमाइलाइटिस स्ट्रेस फ्रैक्चर सब में ही अपन बोन मैरो इडीमा देखते हैं एम आर आई इज दी आंसर सो दैट इज वाई सेक्रो इलियाइटिस ऑल्सो एम आर आई अक्यूट ऑस्टियोमाइलाइटिस ऑल्सो एम आर आई स्ट्रेस फ्रैक्चर ऑल्सो एम आर आई ओके सो रिमेंबर ऑल ऑफ दीज थम रूल्स राइट ना ओनली एनी टाइम यू वॉन्ट टू लुक एट कॉटेक्स एंड कैल्सिफिकेशन कॉटेक्स देखना है कैल्सिफिकेशन देखना है इट इज सीटी एनी टाइम यू वांट टू लुक एट बोन मैरो यू वांट टू लुक एट कार्टिलेज यू वांट टू लुक एट आईवी डिस्क आंसर इज गोना बी एमआरआई है ना तो ये थम रूल्स याद रखो इनिशियल इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑलवेज इन ऑर्थोपीडिक्स इज गोना बी एक्सरे ओके यस नेल इज सुडोमोनास गुड नॉट ह्यूमन नेल दो यस और राइट राइट प्रो बच्चे प्रो मैक्स प्रो वट डू वी हैव हियर सो द क्वेश्चन दैट समबडी आंसर्ड अर्लियर दिस इज द पैरा डिस्कल टाइप यू विल हैव डिस्क गेटिंग इन्वॉल्व एंड देन टू कॉन्जिक्यूटिव लेवल्स अराउंड इट ओके सो दिस इज पैरा डिस्कल ओके पैरा डिस्कल टाइप इज सीन इन ट्यूबरक्यूलॉसिस ओके टी बी फाइन एक्स मस न्यूमोनिक इज अप्लाई हियर What is Xmax pneumonic? ये क्या है? So paradiscal is most common TB. Again, investigation of choice for TB is contrast enhanced MRI. Again, disc को देखना है. It is contrast enhanced MRI. Okay? ठीक है? All right. Then what do we see here? Here we see that one of you was also asking this wandering acetabulum. ऐसा लग रहा है. Acetabulum तो कहीं और है. And femur is somewhere else. So this is wandering acetabulum or mortar and pestle. Do you know what is mortar and pestle? Have you seen? ऐसे दादी माँ doing this. Nowadays we don't see mortar and pestle. मिलता भी नहीं है. But in like olden days, maybe in your childhood you would have seen this. Okay? So this is that. Okay? <laughs> ओके सो दिस इज मोटर एंड पेस्टल नाउ वी आर सो फेमिलियर नो कि ऐसे एक 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 न्यूमोनिक से हमारी मतलब वी गो रेट्रोग्रेड लाइक समबडी टेल्स न्यूमोनिक एंड देन यू कैन रिसाइड दैट एंटायर टॉपिक दैट इज द लेवल वी हैव टू रीच सो मोटर पेस्टल इज सीन इन टीबी राइट एंड स्टेज ऑफ टीबी आल्सो कॉल्ड एज वॉन्डरिंग एसिटाबुलम All right. So as far as TB is concerned, most common obviously is the spine involvement. As far as the joints are concerned, most common is the hip joint. In the hip joint, most common part to be involved is the acetabulum. Okay. So remember all of these points. Okay. Okay. नेक्स्ट एनी टाइम हिप एक्सरे कम्स एंड यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड कि चल क्या रहा है मोटर पेस्टल नहीं समझ आ रहा देर इज सम सम डेंसिटी विच यू आर सीइंग एंड देन देर इज अ लूसेंसी विच इज क्रिसेंट शेप दिस इज कॉल्ड एज क्रिसेंट साइन द डायग्नोसिस इज गोन बी ए वी एन रिमेंबर दिस इज वेरी हाई लाइकलीहुड टू बी आस्ट इफ यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड मार्क ए वी एन ओके so this is going to be a vascular necrosis of the hip again investigation of choices mri which will show you early necrosis it will show you the early changes in the hip joint investigation of choice mri okay avn ka classification bhi hota hai ficket and arlet it is up to your shraddha if you want to remember the classification all right so it is up to you फिकेट एंड आर लेट स्टेजिंग अल्टीमेटली देव नॉट आस्ट द स्टेजिंग पर से बट देव आस्ट की ए वी एन मतलब डायग्नोज कर लो राइट सो जस्ट रिमेंबर इतना बहुत होगा ठीक है फाइनल टू इमेजेस फॉर यू व्हाट डू यू सी व्हेन यू सी रैट बाइट इरोजन्स वेरी लार्ज इरोजन्स फर्स्ट मेटाटासोफेलिंजल जॉइंट दिस इज गाउट डिपोजिशन ऑफ मोनोसोडियम यूरेट क्रिस्टल्स इफ यू डू क्रिस्टल का सैम्पलिंग एंड यू लुक अंडर अ पोलराइजिंग माइक्रोस्कोपी व्हाट आर यू गन सी यू आर गन बी सींग नीडल शेप्ड क्रिस्टल्स नीडल शेप क्रिस्टल्स विच आर नेगेटिवली बायर फ्रिंजेंट और राइट सो दिस इज नेगेटिवली बायर फ्रिंजेंट या दैट इज रेडियोलॉजिकल सिस्टम फॉर एवियन स्टेजिंग फॉर एवियन ओके सो दिस इज गाउट एंड दीज आर कॉल्ड एज रैट बाइट इरोजन्स और मार्टल जी साइन ओके मार्टल जी साइन On the other hand, pseudo gout. Remember, we will have knee joint, which is most commonly affected. Association with H's, hemochromatosis, hypothyroid, hypoparathyroidism will be the associations. You will see positively biofringent crystals, which are rhomboid shape. All right, so that is going to be CPPD, calcium pyrophosphate disorder. Okay. 
I never share any investigation of choice list because I will never ever teach you that list. I will always teach you what should be the answer. Hai na? I will teach you that CT ka answer hoga, X-ray ka answer hoga, MRI ka answer hoga. I will never teach you this answer hoga. Always go the other way around. Agar concepts theek hai, toh kuch bhi question aega, you will be able to answer. If you memorize that list, believe me 100% you will get it wrong. Why you will get it wrong? Because examiner will twist one word and your answer will go wrong. That's why thumb rule and concepts. I will teach you in the MKI class. I will teach you those concepts one more time. But never ever go for those lists. And mix will forget and if there is any answer you will mark it, you will definitely get it wrong. Okay? Alright, coming back. So this is rat bite and pseudo gout. Now we have the final thing that we have here. You can see that there is pencil in cup. Alright, so pencil in cup or telescoping. Bol sakte isko. This is seen in psoriatic arthropathy. So they will give you history of skin lesions, nail lesions. Skin lesions would be erythematous lesions with silvery scales. Nail mein batayenge, pitting ho raha hai, irregular. There is oil drop changes. Uh, subungal hyperkeratosis ye sab findings denge so this is psoriatic arthropathy sometimes it can be very destructive in which case we can use a opera glass deformity arthritis mutilans bolte hain usko very very destructive type okay psoriatic arthritis is alawa what else about psoriatic most common type is oligoarthritis one joint is involved and the most common joint to be involved is DIT pterygium kaha milega shubham Pterygium you will get in LP, right? Lichen planus may more common hota hai pterygium and pup tenting, all right? On the other hand, psoriatic nail changes, you are gonna have pitting, irregular pitting, you are gonna have oil drop. So, I kyun bol rahi irregular pitting, kaha pe milega regular pitting? Regular pitting is gonna be seen in alopecia areata. And now, so now that we have some time, but our alopecia area time kya sign milega. First of all, there will be non-scaring alopecia. Second, you will have an exclamation hair sort of a finding. Okay, exclamation hair milega. And if you do a histopath, there will be so much lymphocyte proliferation, it will look like a swarm of bees because it is an autoimmune disorder. Alright, so associated with hypothyroidism, associated with type 1 diabetes mellitus, associated with Jogren's, all four of these autoimmune disorders stick together. And because white hair are spared, patient will tell you that I am going white overnight. But patient ko aap samjhaoge ki beta white nahi ho raha hai. Aapke white baal hi bache hai. Baaki saare baal chale gai. So that is called going white overnight. Alright. So these, we started off with ortho but we have ended with dermat somehow. Okay. So thank you so much. And this is what we have. So I will see you all again today at 6 o'clock. I will share the link with you all. Thank you so much. Uh, baaki MKI 2 surgery wala link also I will post. Okay. Alright. Kya ho raha hai hab batao. Doubt for studying repeatedly getting self-doubt about preparation and not able to study see again your self-doubt will only go if you if you study right so it's a vicious cycle that you have you you know you are stuck in that you are not studying because you have self-doubt and because you are not studying that self-doubt is further increasing so the only way to break out of this is just drink some water go out for 5-10 minutes start with a topic that you feel slightly good about a lot of times when you're reading a very hated topic like say anatomy or pharma you know your mind just gives up and tells you mujhe kuch nahi aata but that is not true it's just one aspect you know which you are struggling with so just shut that topic for a moment maybe take up a cute subject like derma alopecia area just kuch pyara pyara pad lo ortho pad lo and then you know you will feel better about yourself and then slowly slowly you know baby steps go back to that topic so you got to take care of your mind you got to take care of your mental health all of you do not have any self doubt see in the exam ultimately it's all about gonna it's all about mcqs right aapko chahiye abhi kitna bhi padhai kar lo in the exam you have four options which are there in front of you answer is there in front of you what do you have to do you have to choose the best answer so if you do this well to ultimately uh, you know everything will come back to you so a lot of times we feel ki jaise 
सब कुछ याद नहीं आ रहा समबडी विल आस्क योर क्वेश्चन एंड यू विल फील कि इसका आंसर नहीं आता बट अगेन इन दी एग्जाम तो आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू राइट एंड यू यू विल हैव दैट इंस्टिंक्ट यू विल हैव दैट फीलिंग व्हिच विल टेल यू दैट ये पढ़ा हुआ है कहीं दिस इज द बेटर आंसर एंड सबकॉन्शियसली अगेन आई एम मार्क्स सी आई हैव सम सॉर्ट ऑफ डिसऑर्डर बट अगेन you have to have to realize that you know answer is going to be in front of you so stop with that self doubt have confidence in whatever you guys have studied hai na fmg students and neet students have confidence in your own beliefs and your own clinical acumen itne saal se kuch 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 padha hai everything i will use for that if you go in a panic state of mind in the exam with a self doubt state of mind in the exam you will never have those instincts you will never be able to apply that common sense and logic so something which is very very important for all of you guys and you are saying all sorts of random things in comments kuch aur hi request pe chale gaye but listen to what i am saying very very important that you have to have that confidence you have to have that calmness sitting in the exam hall ki main option sahi mark kar sakta hu i have to choose the best answer depending on what is in front of me based on my long term knowledge so it is not a short term vomit of what you have read right it is going to be a culmination of everything that you have read so confidence rakho and focus on this high stuff pad lo volatile stuff pad lo do the btrs now but what is very very important is you just have got to have that uh, confidence in your own abilities ki i will do it right now whatever you are studying you know focus on the most volatile stuff the most high yield stuff do previous year questions that is all that you got to do and now prepare for the easy questions prepare for those 120 questions which are gonna be based on previous year questions wo galat nahi hone chahiye theek hai okay i hope you guys heard me and not just uh you just didn't chat in the chat section because whatever i said in the last part was far more important than the other 50 minutes i spent teaching okay because ultimately wohi exam mein kaam aayega okay i hope this is clear most radio sensitive is evening sarkoma 6 pm again it's going to be a mixed batch subject it's going to be a btr on a different channel so i'm not talking about it right now so i will just tell you that on the group i'll share the link and uh, uh, it'll be a btr which is mixed batch okay all right medicine mki bhi karenge and we will do पैथ एम के आई ऑल्सो करेंगे बाकी चीजें भी ओके ऑल एम के विल कम समे और दी अदर इट विल कम जस्ट हैव फेथ ओके ऑल राइट थैंक यू सो मच एंड आई सी यू ऑल सून सो स्टडी तब तक पढ़ो अच्छे से एंड टाइम वेस्ट नहीं करना डो नॉट वेस्ट एनी टाइम एवरी मिनट नाव इज वेरी क्रोशियल अन इंस्टॉल कर दो इंस्टा को अन इंस्टॉल कर दो अगर अभी भी फेसबुक करते हो तो बाकी टेलीग्राम को रहने दो बट जस्ट कीप इट ऑन म्यूट एंड ओनली सी नोटिफिकेशंस ओके ऑल राइट थैंक यू सो मच एंड